doctrines. And some people think that because somebody provides you with the doctrine that this is evidence of its existence. You have different layers of the Torah. Now the layers of the Torah were put there. Who put them there? Why are certain things repeated? Why are certain episodes stated in a certain way when they repeat themselves in a similar way somewhere later in many generations? Doesn't it seem that the same language used at a later generation was the hand of, a, of an author of a later generation. In other words, why can't you say, or why won't you admit, Rabbi, that the Torah was written much, much later than it purportedly was given? There are several factors that influence my belief that this is not so. Number one, why would anyone put together any group of documents and make it not seamless, but with such clear uh, separate ideas that it would violate people's sensibilities? If I'm trying to make my own document, I'd write it up as new. I wouldn't put several documents together. I'd put a single document out there. I wouldn't have P and J and E or whatever alphabet soup you got. I'd make my own. I'd make it singular. I'd have it as if it was always there and always will be. Why would I go ahead and write it in a certain way, take old documents and just splice them together? It doesn't make any sense. Another part to this that you have to understand is that when you go through the episodes of the Torah, each episode is unique in its own right, but there's something very, very special about them. The names of the heroes have a specific number of times in which they are mentioned. For example, Abimelech meets Abraham to talk a, a treaty, and they make a treaty in Beersheba. Beersheba means the seventh well. And seven is the expression of oath. They make an oath together, which is associated with the word Sheva or seven, because seven is considered a holy number. That's why Shabbos is the seventh day, and it's holy. Now, Abraham and Abimelech are going to swear, which is Sheva, Shvua, an oath, which is seven. Each one of the hero's names are mentioned exactly seven times. The covenant that they have is mentioned seven times. All of the actions that they take place are mentioned seven times. Even the components of the oath, the, the lambs and sheep, they're mentioned seven times. Well is mentioned seven times, because they argued over the water for well. Why are the words of the Torah and the components within the Torah so carefully chosen? And yet when you read them, you don't realize that they're carefully chosen. It reads like a normal telling of a story. Why, when you have, in the book of the Exodus, when they have the Mishpatim, they have something like 42 different laws. Again, six components of seven. Why are there exactly seven uh, groups of seven types of laws and activities discussed there? And if you go into the discussion, you find that there are many, many different groupings of exactly seven. Even the parts of the law that seem to be innocuous and repetitive are carefully chosen for their language and content. And it is to this author impossible to believe that this happened by human hand. Because by human hand, there's no way you can write a narrative and impute all of these things without making it sound forced. It flows. The language of the Torah flows. It's not forced at all. And then when they discovered the, uh, the biblical codes, which there are many who object to this, but the Bible codes have never been debunked. I know that there are people who have said, well, the methods that they use debunk, debunk what? debunk only 
those things that have been tampered with. But there are many things that have not been tampered with. And even though you can find many codes in Shakespeare, the kinds of codes that have been discovered by the discovery people in the Torah is nothing less than breathless. Because they predict future events. It describes people, places, and things that are yet in the future in equivalent numbered increments within different passages. And always those people and their involvements is germane to the topic at hand in the Torah itself. What I'm saying to you is, is that the words of the Torah and the letters of the Torah are carefully chosen. So you'll ask, well, but Rabbi, how do you know you have the right stuff? This has been 3,300 plus years that you've had this Torah. Maybe more, maybe 3,500, maybe 3,700 years you've had least components of the Torah. How do you know it hasn't been changed? The answer is, we have many different documents. And when there are errors that creep in because of human hand, because the Torah has to be handwritten, it cannot be photocopied. It has to be handwritten by a scribe. And quite often the scribe makes an error. I had a beautiful Sefer Torah donated to me from Russia that's over 100 years old now. And it's magnificent writing. And yet, when we came to one of the sections, an entire word was missing. So it happens. A scribe misses something, a letter, a word, not a sentence, that's impossible, but a word or a letter can be altered or missing. So what do you do? The answer is you go by majority opinion. You gather all of the books of the Torah, and if you see that the pervading majority, significant 70% majority or more, hold one way, you go that way. And the net result is a Torah that is as close as you possibly can make it to the words that Moses gave us. Recently, a man said, well, what do I do myself? I've seen all of these Torahs. I have 300 or 400 versions of different Torahs uh, that seem to contradict the writ in many of the Torahs that we read in the synagogue. So this person used the same method that was used in the Middle Ages to determine what exactly is the, is the text of the Torah. He took all of the deviations from several hundred texts and went by majority opinion, at least 70%, 75%, had to agree. And in the end, he put together his Torah. And what did he have? A carbon copy of the Torah that's read in Yemen, which has a deviance of between four and nine letters from the Ashkenazic version. He had a perfect Yemenite Torah, deviating only a few letters from the traditional, I think four letters from the traditional Ashkenazic Torah that we have. And so, how do I know the Torah is the word of God? As close as I can get, this has been very, very carefully preserved. The words are very, very finely tuned and accurate. Everything belongs there in a systematic way. Even the letters, and even the letters project future events. And not only do they project future events, they are the building blocks of the world. You see, we believe that the Torah is the DNA of the world. The world exists through the Torah and according to the image of the Torah. How is it possible? I don't know. But how does a person come along with a bunch of hydrocarbons on a string, a, com a double helix molecule, which is called DNA? That's the basis of your whole structure. And you can't even see it in the dot of an eye. Maybe there are a million DNAs, cells, strings, in the dot of an eye. And yet, that little millionth of a dot has the whole structure that becomes you. The little Torah has the whole map of the cosmos.